book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 1, 2, and 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Do not neglect to be good and to share what you have for such sacrifice are pleasing to God. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a sophomore at North Kansas City High School. And what most people, if you know one thing about me, it's that I love horses a lot. My first encounter with a horse was at age two and a half. My parents took me to a pumpkin patch and let me go on a pony ride. I asked to go every day until I was six years old. My parents, exhausted, finally relented. And I've been riding ever since. For me, human connections can be challenging. There's all of this body language that there's all these words that people say but don't mean and sit and don't say but mean. I think it's confusing and hard. Horses are much more straightforward. If their ears are flat against their head, better watch out or you might get kicked. After we lost one of our horses at our barn to liver cancer, Sherry, my riding instructor, needed a replacement horse that could be trained to provide lessons for her students. Sherry found Calendar Girl, aka Callie, and thought she'd try her out. Callie is a thoroughbred, a half-sister to one of Sherry's other horses, Buddy. Callie has been a pasture ornament for the last two years. A pasture ornament means that she, hasn't, she wasn't ridden at all. She was fed and her medical needs were taken care of, but nothing else. She was, in, she was in a pasture where she was the bottom of the pack. She was lacking in connections. Sherry thought she'd make a good project for me. So I've been working with Callie multiple times a week for the last four months. We're trying to remind her of her true nature. <coughs> Horses have been bred to help humans do work. They're domesticated, much like dogs. They learn individual humans who they trust and who they don't know. It's been challenging, but we're making progress. Callie likes the other horses in our pasture, especially Ella, her BFF. Ella is a pregnant Hanoverian who runs the pasture like a goddess. Callie is remembering all of her previous training. She's becoming my horse. Making connections is essential in building a relationship of trust. Callie has to be able to know that she can trust me and I can trust her. Humans are part of the animal kingdom. Every living thing needs connections that looks different for everybody. For some people, connecting with horses is impossible. They're dog people, or cat people, or vegetable people. I'm thinking of you, Roger Kuby. <laughs> this experience changed me by allowing me to have a deeper connection with Callie. I'm helping her, I'm helping with her training, and that's a big responsibility. I have to show up every week consistently. I have to actively participate in her world. I can't just sit at home and think about how I train her or look at pictures on Instagram. Every year when we get out our nativity set, I take special care in setting up the animals. They require connections too. The, shepherd keeping, the shepherds keeping watch over the flock by night when the angel of the Lord appeared to them. When the shepherds came to see the baby, he was in a manger surrounded by lots of animals. We have several books focusing on just animals in the manger that witness the birth. Maybe this year, there'll be a horse. Uh, hello, I'm Christian Chamberlain. I'm in the grade at Oxford Middle School. And I'll be sharing what risks and connections we need in something that, really, uh, that I express through both of those things. Uh, first of all, what does connections mean? Uh, well, first of all, remember in school when you had to write down the vocab words, but then you looked in the dictionary, you didn't know which ones, so there were like seven definitions of the same word, <laughs> right? Um, well, really, you can just use all of them, because they all mean the same thing in the end, like connections. It could be like human physical interaction, or it could be a connection like empathy, where you can feel their feeling and you can walk in their shoes. And that's um, all that means. And really, when you think about that, it ties to another thing, it ties to another thing, and it just keeps going. Same with risk. Uh, some people call it luck. Um, some people call it, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. What's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have my head if it wasn't screwed on my neck. <laughs> Um, that's the same thing, um, multiple definitions, all those, they mean the same thing, and they just keep getting tied to other things, um, and it just keeps going. I remember one time, um, I'm a huge theater nerd person, 
by the way. Um, so my sister. So uh, I was in musical rehearsal, and there were these three guys. Um, and I saw this one kid walk in, and I'm just like, hey, I know him. Um, he's been doing this thing with me for a couple of years. Um, but these three kids, they one of their scripts, they just put it to the side. I'm just like, why are they doing that? Um, well, when he walks up there, because we're like, the door's over there, and we're over here, so we have to walk all the way through. Uh, and by the time he gets there, they're just like, sorry, that seat's taken. Why did you do that, man? Like, that's just a stupid thing to do. Uh, so I thought, I thought they were friends, but no, apparently this kid was annoying. I mean, I thought it was great. Uh, I don't know much about it. So, but you know what I did? I knocked them back into the mall. No. Uh, <laughs> no, but really. I took that script, I put it back on his lap, and I'm just like, you know what, that seat's open. I saw them, I saw what they did. You know, it's not true. What they say isn't true. And you know what, I took a risk because um, when, when, the, when you talk in rehearsal, the directors, you know, they give you that look, that snake eye. It's like, <laughs> no talking, come on, you know this. Um, but I took a risk because, you know, I decided to talk and I decided to speak out. Because that's really what you need to do when you see those situations. So whatever, connections or whatever definitions you use for connections or risks, they all mean the same thing. You should just express it in any way you can. Hi. I'm Colton Pasquale. I'm a senior at the Thank you. <laughs> I'm a senior at DeSoto High School, so if you know me, you know that I'm an avid church camp goer. I go to Tolos Conference Center for a church camp every year. I've been going for the past 12 years, and I love it right now. Um, so my first year at church camp when, was when I was about five or six. Um, so I went, and then when I came back home, my mom asked me how it was. I told her I loved it. It was so much fun. I really want to go back next year. What I didn't tell her was that I actually hated it. <laughs> um, I didn't have the heart to tell her that I hated it because she went to church camp as a kid and she loved it every year. So I'm so I'm back to the, sec the second year because I told my mom that I'd go back and I hated it again. <laughs> It was because I never made any friends there. So, but again, I told my mom that I loved it and I'm gonna go back next year. So my third year, I went back and I told myself, Colton, you're gonna make some friends this year. So I got there and I'm looking around the area because you know, we all meet up in the room before church camp actually starts. And I see a kid sitting alone in a chair, like over on the far side of the room. So I go up to him and I say, hi, my name's Colton. And the kid looks at me and he says, hi, I'm Jace. And I've been friends with Jace ever since then. And so I hung out, I hung out with Jace the rest of the camp and that's what made it fun for me that year. And that year I went back home and I didn't have to lie to my mother. <laughs> I actually had fun. <laughs> so the next year I went back and I met two more people. I met my two great friends, Joseph and Cameron. And uh, that year was even more fun because now I had three friends at church camp. And so I went back home, I told my mom I loved it because I actually did. And so I go back next year and I find out that my best friend, Peyton, is going to be there this year. And I've known Peyton since I was about this big, actually this big. and. Uh, um, so now that she was there this year, it was super fun. I had one of my closest friends there with me, and so now I have four friends. And so a few years later came a Cairo camp, which is um, basically middle schoolers, well, in sixth to seventh grade. And I met my two great friends, Megan and Kylie. And I'm still friends with them to this day. But so. <laughs> <laughs> and two years later came Aders Camp, 
Now, Ears Camp is a very special camp. Some of you are ahead of me. <laughs> so, Ears Camp is what a lot of us like to call sex camp. Because in that camp, we learn all about how sex is a God thing. And how God is, like, there with you. And it's just a really good thing. So... You have to go to understand. So, <laughs> I know, I've got time out there. <laughs> but that year, um, you get very close with the people in that camp. Because it's just your grade there. So it's for 8th graders going into high school. And you just get so close with those people. And I got close with everybody that was there. I got close with Meg and Kylie, Jace, Cameron, and Joseph again, and Peyton. And so, now I've been going since then. I'm a senior now, it's my last year at Tall Oaks. And it makes me very sad, because I love it there. And, but it's just amazing me how I can look back at my first year when I hated it, and to look back, and to look now, and how it's a huge part of my life, how I love it there. Um, I'm now on the team that plans all the camp, and, uh, I just love it so much, and because I love it so much, it's all because of how I went out on a limb and made a connection with my best friend, Chase. I'd just like to point out. <laughs>
the experience change you? Um, when originally I thought I had to kiss him, I thought it was me kissing this guy, and we had to like each other, and we had to like be best friends forever. I mean, he's a nice guy, and we're still friends, but I mean, it had more to do with the outcome of the show, with, and not the outcome of my insecurities, which there are a lot of, and I got over them, which is great. Um, now I'm a better person. I wouldn't say I'm a better person, but I'm a better actress, which has um, given me a confidence boost, which is really, really helpful. And where do I see God? I see God in those moments where I have to kiss this boy I hardly know, where I'm scared out of my mind, and I kiss him, and the audience laughs, and I feel okay. So being here today, I encourage you to make connections, and go out of your comfort zones, and be scared out of your mind, and kiss the metaphorical high school boy, and live your dream, and see God, and feel God, and be okay with it.